mill on the left and also of elementals on the right and i have to just tell you it's exactly as it says yeah re <laughs> reminder there's 700 players in the event so quite a lot of players we have tables 12 and 14 so all the players are doing really well in the tournament right now both players i think have a draw they don't have a loss they have a draw and yes we do indeed have the mirror mill and uh Ors of elementals is it, you probably wouldn't label it yourself as elementals. Yeah. You, would, you would label it as a uh, black white scam I which would. is exactly what we were talking about like would, how yeah. you know what does Rag does do right now when uh, Fury is banned? Where do you go from there? Well, let's find out if Black White is the answer. And a lot of people, I think, would like to see the exact composition of the Black White deck because we've talked about the fact that maybe it's a bit too slow, doesn't have enough pressure. I suggested to go with the kind of Grief Blade route. And <laughs> well, 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 we will see if there are any Stoneforge Mystics tutoring any Caldra completes. Uh, for that, for that potentially needed pressure. But now we see f beautiful foil grief out of this full foil deck pitching Orkish Bowmasters. Yeah, and Pavel wisely playing the grief before cracking one of his fetch lands <laughs> to serve his library. I mean, th that's like actually a game winning or losing play. Yeah. So that's a very, very heads up play by, uh, by Pavel. And we see Jay's the perfected mind. Wow. Uh, That's yes. a drown in the lock. What's the card in the middle? Is Baleful. it Baleful Mastery? It is Baleful Mastery and Double <laughs> wow. Land. So, <laughs> I was really excited. All right, let me put Jace on the screen, because this is not a Planeswalker you typically see in Modern. Oh, we do not. Yeah. And uh, Jace the Perfected Mind can be either played as a four mana Jace, we know one four mana Jace, or a three mana Jace, and it basically shrinks a creature mills you to draw cards or just fully mills you. Yeah, the idea here is that this Jace can protect itself for quite a lot of time. Uh, in this case, it would be able to give Grief minus 3, minus 0, uh, accumulate more counters, and at some point you can do minus X uh, to mill target player for 3 times X. So first turn, you, you play Jace, you go plus 1, that Grief is 0 power, uh, now Jace is on six counters. Next turn, you can mill 18 cards from your opponent's deck. If you combine that with cards like Archive Trap, uh, we're looking at a pretty quick uh, clock from the Demir Mill deck. And I don't think there is there is anything like peak modern compared to full foil mill playing versus full foil Ors of Elementals in the 4-1 bracket. <laughs> yeah. or, or actually undefeated bracket. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is peak modern experience. And I swear every time I see a dim, a, mer, a, a, a mill player doing well, it's always a fully foil out deck. Sometimes it's uh, there's this this one person with the with the quadruple sleeves yeah, and yeah, yeah, they yeah. have like a very cool, you know, versions of, of all the cards and they're always doing well. I think that person top like 3 grand for yeah, 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 yeah. something along those lines. So yeah, like this is a deck you can do well with uh, as well in modern. Yeah, that person in particular played turns, taking turns, and they'd be like blue red taking turns, blue black taking turns, and they just, just, just change the decks, the variation of the deck. So you're gonna see, you know, enough Rhinos, enough Azor Azorius control, <laughs> and, and enough Yavmot uh, later on I in the tournament, but we are pretty excited to show you something. Uh, and now we see here. Touch the Spirit Realm. Uh, blinking Grief. <laughs> so that's one way to do it. <laughs> That's where you do it. And yeah, the just Baleful Mastery in hand. Now, it can take care of Grief, uh, but then Pavel will be up a card on that exchange, which is pretty good, which is pretty good. So yeah, trigger, mill three. The one ring milled over. So what we see in Pavel's deck is a card called Emiria's Call, which is one of these flip... Flip lands, right? We talked about this that they are very rarely relevant, right? But in this matchup, when the opponent plays uh, Thassa's Hideous Laughter that counts the mana cost, mm -hmm. and you randomly flip a land that actually costs seven, that's a big deal. Yeah, I remember that there was a there was an Arena Champs or maybe it was Magic Online mocks or, or something, and there was a player that always plays Mill, and I know that a lot of the other players they brought one Emrakul in their sideboard yeah, so yeah, that yeah. they would shuffle their library back. But also, people were asking, why are these hammer decks playing four Emerius calls from this event? And the answer is exactly what you're saying. If the, if you know there is a there is a mill player, then you might as well try to like sort of cheat on the mana cost yeah. of your cards by including lands that actually cost seven instead of zero. And a single prophecy that I did make 
has materialized Stoneforge Mystic on the battlefield, it is indeed Scumblade. It, it, it is Scumblade, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you named it, you called it last round. I, I just felt it, you know. I just felt it. This is the way to go to, you know, put, to put pressure into this potential uh, black-white scum variation. Yeah, that that actually that that makes sense. Yeah, Ameria Skull certainly is the the other the other upside of the card is that you get to pitch it to Solitude. Whoa, uh, but you that's don't typically aggressive. Pitch, play for Solitude pick, pitching Stoneforge Mystic just to get rid of the crab. Uh, that is really aggressive. Okay, trigger. Well, this is not actually very fast. Like three cards at ten and pass. That is pretty slow compared to Stoneforge and Kaldra coming down soon enough. And so I think we'll be activating it. Yeah, so Pavel gets to untap with the Stoneforge here, which is a big deal, but no nothing really unexpected against a mill deck. We start off with Thoughtseize to make sure that the coast is clear. Oh, Pavel, uh, uh, Manuel thinking what? to do in response eco in truth wow, that's a card i haven't seen since like so since, now he has legacy. to okay yeah now we're responding yeah eco in truth classic classic so yeah now we respond fetch there is no trap because that's the last card in uh david's hand caldra oh i think that's actually a really good position for 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 pavel because he gets caldra and he gets to reuse the stoneforge next turn because he's bounced yeah and his library is still pretty big yeah you know, it's like 40 ish cards so He's definitely in no danger of uh, getting immediately milled by a top deck from Manuel. And that's a really good position, I think, for Pavel. And pass the turn. Sometimes what you see with Stoneforge Mystic is Stoneforge sets out, let's say, the Sword of Fire Eyes because you have Kaldra in hand, but the opponent doesn't take... It's not telegraphed, right? Mm. So you set out Sword, they play around Sword, and you just go, Kaldra. And it's like, oh my god. I like how, how Pavel really go, goes all in on the foils, including the germ token. <laughs> yeah. Smash <laughs> for five again. And it closes the... It's basically reality smasher. Yeah. And that's what I really like about Stoneforge uh, and this card, because, like, you would literally turn three smasher uh, very consistently. Dotty Voidwalk on the field, uh, getting drowned into the Stoneforge we knew about, Double checking if he has anything to search. Wait, so Manuel being at eight life, if you can find a sword with protection from blue, yeah. And if you have the fifth line, that could just be the lethal attack next round. Actually, he doesn't need the mana because he can put it with oh, stone forge. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And equip. So this is this is lethal as is. It, this looks like the sor swords of fire and ice. But Tasha. So he's just like, okay, let's see if I can actually win. Two. Uh, something. It's three, I think. <laughs> plus four. Plus four. Oh my god, yeah. Plus four again. Plus I got D plus three. Oh, that's awful. I don't think it if it even was ten. It may not have been ten cards, even. Yeah, I think Pavel is pretty safe here with roughly 30 cards in his library. And yeah, activate. Act put this. Equip. Exactly what you said. Put sword into play, activate. Wow, that's Smash clean. Smash for lethal. Wow, that's clean. so Pavel takes game one uh, with the black white evoke. Black white evoke, it is, yeah. Black white evoke, black white scam, ores of elementals, uh, whatever you want to call it. And Stoneforge did play a huge role there because it actually allowed that yeah. clock to be there. Otherwise, he would just be passing the turn back. So I like that this deck has some very good turn two plays. You have both Stoneforge and Orcish Bowmasters. Yeah. Uh, two very, very powerful cards in the format. Uh, turn one, what can you do? Thoughtseize, obviously, plus Grief and one of the scam cards. Uh, if you're running black-white, do the scam cards get, get better? Like, do you get to improve in that, in that department? You get to improve in the sense that Ephemerate gets you triple the trigger. Oh, yeah. Because first trigger, blink, and then upkeep again. Do it again. So you get like a literally Thank you very much. triple grief. Um, and triple griefing, I mean, that's... That is brutal, yeah. That is really brutal. Um, now, it does mean that you don't get to attack. So you're setting yourself back on the, on the, cl on the clock. So you have to decide whether you it's better, because it might not be. Maybe it's better to just kill the opponent. Mm. Um, uh, but there are very few things better than triple thought seizing. So... Uh, ephemerate is pretty good. You can also Ephemerate Stoneforge Mystic. 
which is relevant. Um, you can ephemerate Orkish Bowmasters. So actually, ephemerate is just yeah, really very good. good value card. Very the deck, good value yeah. card. Yeah, and touch the spirit la realm, uh, like we saw in the first game, was actually quite uh, decent as well. Uh, when I look at the mana base, it's it's pretty pretty clean as well. We've got a few utility lands, uh, but otherwise pretty stock and sideboards. Oh my god, there's just so much going on there. Is there <laughs> anything in modern sideboards that you can bring against a deck? like mill other than the eldrazi obviously you don't want to get paired against tron you know which are going to just keep reshuffling their deck back into their library thanks to the eldrazi is there anything that reasonably other decks, yeah that other decks can reasonably have like if you are the mill player is there something you have to like sideboard for because you expect your opponents to have like if you're playing dredge you expect your opponents to have tormod script yeah. to have leyline of the void you know rest in peace so you preemptively bring cards uh, for game two, if you are playing mill, what do you have to be afraid of? I think the biggest one is endurance, because it's a very commonly card, which is a graveyard hate, which also allows you to put back everything back into your deck. So endurance is a big, big one. Um, but I think if you have just no early removal, backed up by counter spells and pressure, it's also pretty decent. So you know, if you play, let's say Merc Tide, you just add spell pieces. Uh, make sure that the the early crap dies. Spell pitch, they they um, no hit his laughter and go from there. Actually, speaking of Mer of Merktide specifically, what I really like as the Merktide player, you can keep almost any hand with Merktide Regent because they will fuel it oh, for yeah, you. Yeah. And actually, yesterday in side events, I did win against Mill because I played turn two Merktide and it just I rode yeah. it to victory. Yeah. Um, so that that's another thing. Also, having incidental high costs in the deck. I think Mill gets progressively worse because people have Evoke Elementals, Leyline Binding, Murktide Regent, whose actual cost is really high and it makes it much tougher. A Mill also doesn't want to play against decks that don't shuffle much. So when you play against decks that just makes land drops and does the thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't get to uh, use you a trap as much. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So they might just get paired against, I don't know, five color humans, which is don't shuffle, and there is a problem, right? Um, when you can't convert those traps. Mm, you might also get paired against a graveyard deck, so you actually fuel their strategy. Could be problematic. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of things happening there. Because on the flip side then, Mill can play against combo deck, and then you can maybe, you know, mill, mill all the Belchers, mill, yeah. mill the Titans, uh, mill the one-off Thassa's Oracle or something. Mm. So mill attacks from a very interesting angle. I, I, it might seem very straightforward, mill, 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 but it affects the texture of the game a big way. I think that's my point. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm looking at how many ways do you typically have in a, in a mill deck, in a Dimir mill deck, to shuffle your opponent's deck if they are not doing that themselves. It's hard to imagine this format without, you know, decks without fetch lands. Yep. Most decks run polluted deltas, misty rainforest, all that stuff. But as you said, you know, decks like humans that are typically playing uh, different kinds of mana base, uh, they're not really shuffling their deck as much. So how many ways do you have to do that for your opponent? And I'm um, yeah. really thinking of just Surgical Extraction. Uh, I don't know if there is uh, much more than that in uh, you blue usually black. Some f Field of Ruins, maybe. Yeah, Field of Ruins is a typical way to force a shuffle. Yeah, and you can fail to find, but you have to shuffle your deck. Yeah. It's not like you can decline. Yeah, I'm not going to... You know what? I'm fine. You just destroy my land. That that's not how it works. You have to look through your deck. You can fail to find, but you have to shuffle it. There are some people who sometimes side in a lot of cards against mill. Uh, yeah. And now we see Sheldock Isle on the left side and ex engineered explosives on the one on the right side, uh, with silent clearing, which might indicate a single land in hand, like a yeah potentially thought sees you. Although, to be fair, Pavel knows that his life total in this matchup is not really <laughs> going to be too relevant. So, doesn't okay, mind starting that's, a, the, the that's a hand. So, what are we looking at? That's a, that's a Tasha's Hideous Laughter. There's an Archive Trap, an Echoing Truth, and something, the second card from, from the left? It's Fractured Sanity. Oh, that's Fractured Sanity. Okay. So, a pretty good hand, although kind of slow. Um, he might bounce the EE, but that doesn't accomplish much. He might activate Fractured Sanity and then go into Tasha's. But th the issue is, 
there is no consistent recurring way of milling. We all know the, the classic perspective that burns best openings include creatures because, because creatures are a consistent way of dealing damage, right? If you just use spells, you probably won't get there. And it's very similar with mill. You really need those crabs to get the consistent recurring mill, especially in conjunction with fetchlands, with field of ruin. Without the crabs, you might just be too slow. Like, no, cycle mill four, then Tasha mills like 10 ish. That's not going to cut it. Yeah, so what's what's going to be very important here is uh, how fast is Pavel's hand, right? Uh, does he have that stone fort? Does he have whatever aggressive elements his deck might be? Uh, and we see a couple of cards milled over. And yeah, draw from Miguel on top. We might see just Slam Tashes. It might actually be the best opening to Slam Tashes. But he's still considering his options, but he, yeah, touches he is. will. And let's count together. Four plus two is six. Plus one is seven. Oh, God, 11. Oh, 18. Was that a troll of Kazadu? It was. <laughs> that, is, that is very unfortunate. Yeah, wow. I think so it was. Yeah. Pavel got milled for roughly eight or ten cards there. It, it wasn't much. It so wasn't much. Yeah, still sitting pretty, but he does need to find... Uh, something aggressive. I think what's worth mentioning is that there is Kaldra Complete exiled. So you, you it actually stomps a proper, proper part of this aggressive game plan. Okay. So your Stoneforge can now find a sword, maybe like a Lion Sash, maybe Butter Skull. Uh, depends on the exact configuration. Mm, Butter Skull. I remember when people discussed that maybe you can unban Stoneforge, but you'd have to ban Butter Skull. I mean, you just, yeah, just no. can't have both. And it turns out you very much can, because the the modern format shadow banned butter skull. <laughs> you just you just don't see it. It's just yeah. Uh, you know why would you have butter skull and sta stab stabilize on turn three when you can play Kaldra and kill the opponent in three attacks? Exactly. And now we see a fetch, uh, a shock again. Life total doesn't really matter, although twelve life. Oh, be careful! Be careful. <laughs> And yeah, three mana. Uh, okay, may have been tapped. It, that's it. Stoneforge Mystic, not even search. Yeah, I think the the Kaldra was already milled, and perhaps the, there might have also been the or something is in hand. The sword, it perhaps it's in hand. Yeah, I think it may have been Stoneforge pass. Oh no. Okay, that's exactly what David wants to see. And a ghost quarter. A card you might recognize, not really seen, seeing play much nowadays. But Ghost Quarter into Tasha's. Four. Th plus three, that's seven. That's ten. Eleven, fifteen. Grief, wow. Oh my god. That, that, that's, that, is it, it even ten? That was the three mana card. It was. That it, you yes, it's a flanker. Yeah. have in the draft. Good seal flanker. Good seal flanker, wow. But I again, I'm not sure if it was even ten cards. Ta Tashis is really average in this matchup. Sometimes you should consider even trimming or cutting Tashis because if you're getting you no know, three mana mill eight, that's mm. that's not the rate you want to go for. Yeah, mm. that that that's an expensive thing to do in modern. Like spending your entire th third turn to mill eight cards of your opponent's deck, that might just not do it. Yeah. And chat is pointing us to the fact that this might not be Stoneforge, but Sword, which, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe. It, it looks very much like a like, promo Stoneforge. And now we see Crab into Sheldock Isle, trigger, trigger. And that's Stoneforge land Stoneforge, I think. And Sheldock Isle, uh, sometimes played in like Legacy of Vintage for in Doomsday. Uh, I saw, you know, like sideboard plans uh, to cheat an Emrakul into play. But here, you probably just want to be able to play Tashes. And now we're just counting through the cards. I think it's still plenty. I think it was roughly in the 27 uh, range, which is a lot. That, that's, yeah, that's a lot it's half, yeah, half the deck. It really puts you in a squeeze when you play, let's say, like a, again, Murktide deck, 
and you've got the preordains, the expensive iterations, and you see you've got a third of the deck left. Do you play the cantrips? Do you play the card advantage spells? And I typically go with the rule that, well, you might not win if you don't, because you don't. it doesn't matter if you lose with one card in the deck, right? And you might need these counter spells that you draw into. Um, My idea is usually you have to play to win. Yeah. You can't play to not to lose. You have to try to find uh, lines that are going to allow you to actually win the game. So even if it means, yeah, drawing more cards when you have just very little cards left in the library, you, that's, that's, if that's the, the winning line, you have to go for it. Yeah, precisely. And now we see Pitch Solitude. So a two for one. Um, oh. So a line that's available is Ghost Quarter, My Own Land. Just to search a land and get a trigger. Have a land drop, yeah. That's that's pretty cheeky, but that's possible. So uh, yeah, I think he's con is he considering the play or is explaining that he's doing the play? All right, so he does ghost quarter himself. Knows three more cards. <laughs> Yeah, they're counting through again. The biggest issue with mill, and similarly to burn, is your cards conceptually do nothing until you win. Right. It, yeah. Yeah, which is a weird way of looking at it. But like, you're not depriving the opponent of any resource. Actually, right? You're milling the cards in random order from the library, unless they're playing a combo deck, which needs that one-off ten drills yeah. of agony, or you know something along those lines. That yeah, it doesn't actually accomplish all that much if you just make their library smaller. Yeah, which is which is something I really enjoy about Magic that you have these archetypes, these kind of strategies, and they exist. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. And so sometimes it might even be bad for you that you're milling your opponent who is <laughs> yeah. on Dretro and you know who is on a deck that gets Living to use Delph cards, gets to cast their Merc Merc Tides faster and Treasure Cruises and whatnot. Okay, so now we see two power on the battlefield, but this sword might actually finally be able to be converted. We know though there is echoing truth. And you can echoing truth either the target of the sword or the sword itself. Mm -hmm. And I think targeting the sword might make sense because then it takes the opponent a ton of time to redeploy it, right? You pay two now to equip. You bounce it. Then you play three for the sword. Two, and then yeah. two again. So you essentially deprive your opponent of seven mana if they want to do do the same thing. Uh, again, I think Pavel knows about the echoing truth as well, though, because that's that was in hand from the first, the very first or second turn when uh, Grieve got played. So he does know that that is a play that Manuel has available. Decides to attack instead and play a Flicker Wisp. <laughs> <laughs> So the most likely target for that is the Orcish Bowmasters because that is going to give Pavel a little bit of extra value. He does go for that. Bings, Manuel for <laughs> one. The Amos token is now at 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, counting again. Sometimes when I play against Mill, I actually have a, like a D20 die to try to remember how many cards are left because otherwise, logistically, people have to keep recounting. Mm. So maybe it's actually better, again, logistically, to just track it on a dice. And Echoing Truth... <laughs> okay. Echoing Truth on Flicker Wisp is not something I had on my bingo card <laughs> yeah, coming is, into yeah, today. Yeah, that is not something I expected to see <laughs> in a modern tournament. It's actually much, much more likely in, like, Legacy, right? Like, no, no. Ad yeah, yeah, Tendrils, yeah. Uh, Truth on your Flicker Wisp against Death, death and Taxes, but yeah. In vintage, even like that's that, that that's a play you're more likely to see in vintage than in modern. Uh, but here we are, undefeated tables, and I think that's an equipment smash. Let's count again, shall we? <laughs> I think now you know why why uh, Mono might have a draw. <laughs> <laughs> Spends uh, forty percent of the round counting his opponent's library. Now, <laughs> crucially, the draw of Sword of Fire Ice is not optional. Um, oh, you have to draw a card, yeah. You have to draw. But it's a trigger. So if you manage to deal enough damage uh, with the creature first, and you're, that gets your opponent to zero, only then the trigger goes in the stack, and you're not going to have to draw. But this could be this could force a draw, right? Because when the trigger from Sword both oh, kills the opponent... Yes, yes. <laughs> that, is a, that is something that can very easily happen. So we're milling again. Uh, I wish could, I could tell you what those cards are, but... 
Uh, it's Tasha, so it won't be oh, double Bobo's, solitude. Wow. Oh my god. Bubba was very quick there with the milling. Now yeah. Manuel should know how many cards there are because he counted right before that. But he destroys his own land now? Mill three more. But there is no crab, right? Oh, the, wait, the crab's dead. So... I mean, I think he 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 wants to, uh, yeah, he wants to make oh. his own graveyard bigger. Oh, and it's apparently it. Gets an island, activates Sheldock Isle, and casts an archive trap to mill the rest of Pavel's library. So, in this game, Pavel's draw was pretty slow. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he did get some nice value from his cards, Orcish Bowmaster, you know, bling that with fl Flicker Wisp, but this is not really. Uh, the kind of matchup where you should go for value. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, so in an unexpected turn of events, actually the, the MVP one could say was the Sheldok Isle, uh, because this led directly to victory, right? Archive Trap also played with Sheldok Isle. You do not have to meet the condition. Like, it's it could still play it as a five mana card. Mm. The same way you can still play Solitude for five mana, or maybe Lightning Axe for six. Like, you have to really remember that you will typically use a card in a certain way, but you sometimes need to use this obscure mode. Like with Giggs we saw, right? Mm. There was a game where Giggs should have been potentially activated for like seven mana. Um, or maybe uh, with uh, Yogmoth, right? You proliferate. Yeah, and Tron might be the best deck to activate Giggs for seven against. Against, yeah. Uh, given that they have these cards like Ulamog and Karn and Wormcoil Engine and whatnot. Yeah, and some people will mention also five mana for Force of Will, classic. Yeah, and this is why Up the Beanstalk got axed from the format because casting Archive Trap for free was just too good, uh, you know, together. So that's why we're not seeing it anymore. I really wish we'd seen like <laughs> blue green mill. Blue green mill with Up the Beanstalk. Yeah. No, you could also oh, like bug because if uh, murderous murderous cut as your removal, and then you've got no, even more cards that trigger it. It could have happened. But it sadly won't. Yeah, look at all these possibilities. Can you imagine? <laughs> Maybe playing these these pitch pitch elementals that that you can Grief mill? cast for free with uh, with up the beanstalk. <laughs> that sounds cool. Okay, now we're looking at the opening hand. So players are pretty quick to sideboard, to shuffle, and to mulligan. I peek at the top, Martin. Do you peek at the o top? Always. I always <laughs> look at the top because. Let's say you, you're looking at a one-lander, right? Yeah. And you're like, wow, my hand's great, but I only have one land. If I don't draw the second one, I'm screwed. So if you look at the top of your... If you decide to take a mulligan, and then you take a look, and there are no lands, then I feel like I have made a, de made a decision that I would have lost the game. So I, see I gave myself an extra life, sort of, in this game by taking a mulligan. And yeah, if there are three lands on the top, then I'm thinking, well, I already mulliganed. There's nothing I can do now. So it, it oh, sucks, this but, way. Okay, okay, fair know. enough. So it's like a combination of uh, patting yourself on the back for the good thing, yeah. and out of my control for the bad thing. I, I, it makes it makes sense. Uh, I never, I, I never peek because then, yeah, I just just feel bad. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want. To, yeah, crab bridge drown. Quadruple land, no black souls there. I think there is a field of ruin, though. I think the, the yes. last card on the bottom is a field That's of a ruin. That's a very slow fetch land. And Pavel took a mulligan to six, so one extra card it, it, in his deck <laughs> might uh, uh, might be relevant. Yeah, it might, it might, yeah. I mean, sometimes I see people siding into, like, 65 cards against mill. Um, oh, that is a thing, actually, yeah. Uh, you can sideboard up to 75 now. Yeah, you could. You that could. is actually very relevant. You, the the... The rule used to be that you have to switch. You have to switch one for one, I think. But now, if you want to add cards to your deck, you can do that. Which that's actually <laughs> quite interesting. If you're Pavel, would you be thinking of adding some more cards to your deck? I think you could add suboptimal, expensive cards if you have them. Like if you had, oh yeah, you no, know, again, a Murktide Solid Shoe, sure, whatever. Yeah. Just expensive cards. I'm looking at his cyber right now, and he doesn't have anything particularly expensive, so he might not. But you might sideboard up to, let's say, 63. You know? Yeah, if you have, like, th you know, three decent creatures, like an extra two-drop in your sideboard or something, you might decide to bring that in. Obviously, you, you don't want to put complete blanks in your deck because if you draw them, you know, then th the card doesn't do anything. And this might be actually the reason we see Flicker Wisp. Because it's not good. It's but just it's, an extra but creature, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now, a tough decision for Pavel, because you'd like to take the Crab, right? But this bridge, you'd have to have a proper long-term plan for the bridge, right? 
Yeah. Flicker Wisp is a Planagate yeah. bridge. <laughs> Coincidentally, uh, Skyclave Apparition could be a plan. Touch the Spirit Realm does deal True. with the artifact. That's actually surprisingly many, but we do take the bridge. It's actually funny how to approach sideboarding in this matchup because, you know, cards like the One Ring, you don't want to really have that card against Mill. You don't want to keep drawing even more cards. Yeah. But at the same time, as you mentioned, it's an expensive card. So against Tasha's Hideo's Laughter, uh, that's a good card to have in my deck. You could reconsider after game two if you see whether they kept the Tashes. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, David has certainly kept them in. So you know expensive cards are, are good, right? Unless David has reconsidered and cut them. <laughs> right. Well, Pavel deciding to go with the Shock Land here rather than the Fetch Land. Just in case there is an Archive Trap lurking in Manuel's hand. And goes for a Stoneforge Mystic. Which resolves. That's certainly good news for, for Pavel. And this Kaldra. I think th this is the opening you want. Thoughts is into yeah. Kaldra. Exactly. Actually, this is, this is a really huge upside for Black-White. Because you either have, for example, the Scam Draws. You also have these unfair feeling draws. Um, so that, are, like, when you add this all up, the density of potential really powerful openers is pretty high. Mm. I kind of like the idea of this black white deck. I like that you have scam, uh, you have scam, you have grief and thoughtsies yeah. uh, as a way to, you know, protect yourself from any kind of shenanigans that modern gets to offer. Uh, but you also have some proactive spells. Yeah. Stoneforge Mystic being one of the, one of the, I guess it used to be a lot better than it is now, but it's still one of the one of the better turn two proactive spells uh, you can make in the format. Oh, double thoughts is milled. But yeah, now he will just go to town and five attacks. The game is over. Grief was the pickup. So from this position, whose side would you like to be on? Uh, depends on the player's hands, but I mean, Pavel certainly has the. You know the start necessary to apply the pressure and and uh, you know go for a for for exactly the type of opening that he needs to find. <laughs> oh, and we see Shieldred's edict pitch. Grief take the only spell, and it's actually wow. So manual flooding out four lands in hand. But then you pitch the removal spell. So is you... the crop surviving? I think the crop is surviving here. I think that is very reasonable though for Pavel. Yeah, I mean, you have no cards in hand. You have a crab. You can you can keep milling me for three or six if you you know play a fetch land or draw a fetch land. But in the meantime, I'm swinging a four five a turn, and that's good enough for me. Now I know that I can create the fetch land. There is no archive trap. Yeah. Imagine if turn two, Pavel plays the fetch land before the stone forge. He cracks the fetch land. You know, finds a planes, planes uh, plays his uh, stone forge. And Manuel responds with an archive trap and mills the Kaldra com complete, for example. That would have been an absolute blowout. So this is the matchup that you won't have a lot of experience against because it's a niche deck, but you have to have a lot of experience to have these tiny edges. Because as you said, a single fetch too many can literally cause you the game. Mm. And then you would say, well, they were lucky to mill this over, but you may have maybe you may have been able to play around it. Like in this case. An interesting situation here. Pavel getting Field of Ruined, destroying one of his lands, gets to search his library for a basic. There are certainly spots where you might not want to find the basic. E even if there is one in, in your deck, you can fail to find because, well, that's an extra card in my deck, which, you know, my deck is the life total for, 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 for this game. So maybe in this case, the third land, you kind of still want it, but there are certainly situations where... Uh, you may want to uh, leave that land in your deck instead. Yeah, yeah, absolutely agree with that. And we see a pretty commanding position right now for Pavel, with Kaldra attacking for five, and then the EE -E being being able to get rid of the crab. Still with cards in hand, so attack you. Uh, Pavel is the token behind the equipment enjoyer. <laughs> There are a lot of schools of, 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 of this approach. What's this? Costs uh, two mana. It, it does. Is that, is that Lion Sash? I think it might be Lion Sash. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some, some explanation going on there. And they're double, triple checking. It might be Lion Sash and they're discussing the potential equipping. 
Mm. Yeah, and the Caldra, Caldra complete token having indestructible, that's actually a pretty big game here. The Dimir player can find, we saw Econ Truth, maybe a Shieldred's Edict, something along those lines, but there certainly aren't that many ways to deal with an indestructible creature. Yeah, Baleful Mastery. Oh, that we yeah, saw that's, true, that's true, that's true. Fair point. Uh, but but this is the thing. When you let the crop survive, see how many cards a single crop has milled. Probably yeah. already more than two oh, Tasha's yeah. previous game. Yeah, so we're f finishing shuffling up. David probably really hoping he, he had a companion to use, some, to use the mana on something. There is no into the story in the deck. A classic rogue card taking advantage of the mill. So Lion Sash being activated here, exiling one of the cards. Manuel sitting on four lands. We know there's an Ottawara in his hand, so that's one of the ways to deal with the Cauldra token. Uh, so he does have that play available to him, which I'm sure Pavel knows about that. I think the, the Ottawara was, was in the hand uh, a lot earlier. And that's an attack for five plus two. So that's non-lethal, but could very much be lethal. Otawara on the waiting duty to intervene whenever necessary. So you could Otawara the, the Kaldra and thus make the germ disappear, which, which is one way to do it. Or you can, you can Otawara the germ, keeping Kaldra on the battlefield so that a future Stoneforge can easily replay it. And we do see that happen. So the clock has has decreased fundamentally. Sig yeah, significantly now. So Lion Sash has an activated ability where you pay one white to exile a creature from the Tomb of Graveyard. That is not as that is affected by summoning sickness because you don't need to actually tap the card yeah. to use it. Yeah, these are these know, tiny rule edges that you need to learn as you go because it, it does make a difference. It does make Magic a is such a complicated game. I keep having like some of my friends ask me, hey, can you can you teach me? Can you teach me how to play? My girlfriend <laughs> keeps asking. I'm like, don't take this the wrong way, but I don't want to do that. It's the rules are so complicated. I don't even know where to start. Yeah. On on top of the fact that there are not really any uh starter decks anymore. Or starter or like formats, yeah. yeah, like something that you would get to try to explain to someone with uh, cards that don't really have abilities. But back back to the game. Pavel does have a decently sized lion sash, but that is about it. Uh Manuel with a soul guide lantern. Yeah. Attack for four. Okay, yeah. Pop draw down to four life. Ah, uh, uh, visions of beyond maybe. Oh, Art, that's a crab. That's a okay. Crab. Okay. Because visions of beyond could draw three. Basically, an ancestral. Uh, okay, he just poop poop. Wow, and Chump the crab is. is in chub block mode. Oh, and now one top deck. Stay alive. Can you stay alive? Ah. Uh, Oh, counting the deck doesn't doesn't sound like I draw a blank. Pretty big though. This seems more than what one card for Manuel could do. Yeah, that that sounds like twenty five ish cards. Uh, let's see what that is. Oh, okay, mill four and redraw. That makes sense. Makes sense. A land? I, th I think that the mannerisms indicate a land. You know, you make the space between lands and stuff. <laughs> yeah, what's the card? What's the card? He's slow rolling all of us. Tr no trigger. Basic island. Yeah, I think Manuel is in is in trouble. Pass. Oh, and Pavel says, draw a card with my castle Loch Twain. Not afraid. Not afraid of anything. Trigger. Oh, activate ability. Lion Sash. 
Draw for the turn. No counter magic available, so just smash it and hope for the best. Attack you for five. Is that an <gasps> available oh, after? Wow. Oh, oh, it's up deck. And Pavel has no pressure right now. Oh, that's actually insane. Wow, and the creature gets exiled. That's actually insane. And he wow. doesn't. Oh, God. I think Pavel is considering activating the castle in response. Or like no, he exiling exactly. more cards. Okay, so he wouldn't have twenty in the graveyard for vision. Oh, that's, that's that that that's five head. Yeah. Whoa, Ooh. that's children. Oh god, oh god, oh god. So top deck after top deck, one player drawing the right. I think answer. that was a trap. Was, I think that was a trap. I think that was a trap. Trap is not good enough though, right? I think uh, there there is more than twenty. Yeah. Oh, it's not. That was yeah, that was a trap. But I think Pablo had more than twenty cards left. Untaps, attacks with the shield jet, and takes the round. Moves on to five wins oh. and a draw with the ores of... No, what, what did you call it? Uh, a scam blade. A scam blade, yeah. Scam blade, you heard it here first. Best deck in modern. Go get your stone <laughs> mystics and ephemerates uh, confirmed. Wow, that was... That